There are a lot of videos about Google Performance Max that talk about best practices and things that you can do to get better results. I've made a couple of them myself. Those videos can be helpful, but let's take a look at the other side. A lot of people, including myself, have made mistakes setting up and maintaining a Performance Max campaign. In this video, I'm gonna be sharing a list of things that you want to avoid inside of Performance Max so that you aren't left with poor results and scratching your head as to what happened. If that sounds interesting, let's discuss. Hey friends, my name is Scott Redgate and if you're new to this channel, I'm passionate about helping small businesses make more and spend less and show you that you have what it takes to manage your own online marketing campaigns. Today, we're gonna run through some of the top things that you wanna avoid when setting up and maintaining a Performance Max campaign. Stick around because I have some specific points for both e-commerce websites who sell products and lead generation websites whose goal may be increasing phone calls, form submissions, or in-store visits. But before we jump into the slides, I have a free gift that I want to give you. It's my seven day online marketing jumpstart PDF. You can get it at scottredgate.com slash jumpstart. If you're looking for simple tips that can get your business results, this is the document for you. It's completely free. It's quick. It's simple. It's bullets. And after you complete the steps outlined in this doc, not only will your website have a solid foundation to generate more revenue or more leads, but you'll have a lot more confidence that you can manage your own online marketing campaigns without hiring an agency. Without further ado, let's jump into the slides. So in this video, it's going to be a little bit different. We're going to be talking about the things that you should not do inside of Performance Max as you set up and manage a campaign. But before we do that, let's take a step back. Let's do a basic overview of what Performance Max is. Performance Max is Google's campaign type that stretches across their entire network of websites. So YouTube, Display, Search, Discover, Gmail, and Maps. As an advertiser, your advertisement can show on any of those placements. Performance Max is heavily automated. It relies on machine learning and there's little information that Google gives us and there's a lot less levers that we as advertisers have to control compared to other campaign types. Another difference with Performance Max is that you don't necessarily create an ad. You actually upload assets into what they call an asset group. So an asset group is simply a collection of images, videos, headlines, and descriptions. And then what happens is Google actually assembles the advertisement for you on your behalf using all of the assets that you created. So that leads me into the first thing that you do not want to do. It's very easy to skip over the video section, especially if your business does not have any videos or any commercials or any advertisements. It's one of those sections that you would breeze past and not think anything about it. And here's where it is inside of the asset group. Here's what it looks like. If you do not have one, Google will create video videos automatically when possible. And so this is a tweet from the Google Ads liaison where she says, Performance Max creates videos from the text and images that you upload to a campaign. If you want more customization, we'd recommend uploading your own videos, but we understand that's not always possible, yada, yada. Um, What's important to note here is yes, if you do not upload any type of video asset into that slot, Google will use information that's on your page, they'll use information that you had uploaded into the campaign, um, and they will create a video for you on your behalf. Now the thing with these videos are they are very unprofessional. Um, Candidly, they look like something from the 1990s with, with Windows 95 and Microsoft Paint. And so you want to avoid that. Uh, you want to have your business come across as professional as possible to encourage uh, getting the click from your audience. Now, even if you've never taken the time to create commercials or videos for your business, there's a couple of resources um, that I can recommend. So one of them is Canva, and Canva is very easy to create a short video. Um, it's, it's free, they have a, a free version. They also have a paid version, but you can create videos that are free. Um, and even if you just spend a little time inside of Canva, you will have a video asset that is more professional than the one that Google could 
would create. Uh, another resource that you could consider using is WeVideo. So WeVideo is a cloud-based video editor. It's very simple to use. You don't need the fanciest computer. Um, so you could sign up for a uh, plan with WeVideo and create a small video, or you can use Canva. And if you upload something in that slot, as the Google Ads liaison says right here, um, they won't use any auto-generated videos um, if you upload your own video assets. Another thing that you want to avoid is having too many asset groups in Performance Max, especially if your budget is small. Um, there are a maximum number of asset groups per campaign and that is 100 and as i said before an asset group is made up of images logos headlines descriptions and videos and if you do have a large budget um, a cool thing about asset groups is you can really segment the different areas of your business or your different product types into their own asset groups um, so it's a little bit more customized it's a little bit more tailored uh, surrounding the products or services that you offer um, but if you have a very small budget you don't want to overload the system with too many asset groups and here's an example of what that would look like so let's say your performance max budget is $200 per day, but you have 20 asset groups. Um, this would mean that on average, each asset group has access to $10. And as I mentioned before about performance max, is it is heavily automated and it requires a lot of learning, machine learning. Um, so the more headroom that you give it, the more spend that you give it, the more that it can learn. But if you have a small budget, which a lot of us are limited by the budget that we can spend inside of Google Ads, you don't want to overload it because if you have all these different asset groups, the system's not going to be able to learn as well. It's going to try to spend a little bit of money in each of the asset groups and there might be an asset group that becomes the winner, but it's just, it's too cluttered. So if you have a small budget, try to limit the number of asset groups that you have to one, two, or at a max three um, so that your campaign has the ability to learn as quick as possible so you're able to drive the highest return possible inside of performance max the next thing that you do not want to do is turn final url expansion on and not follow up so final URL expansion, if you're not familiar with it, it helps you optimize performance max, at least this is according to Google, where it replaces your final URL and Google scans your website looking for relevant landing pages um, that match the user's search and intent, and then it creates a dynamic ad for you leading to that landing page that Google had scanned. But in October of 2022, Google announced that they can actually use information on your landing page, not information that you created in assets, but information on your landing page to create these dynamic ads. So let's say that you have a category or a service page on your website and you have final URL expansion enabled, and let's say you have a small snippet of text on that page that describes your privacy policy or something like that. Uh, there's a chance that Google, as they scan the page and as they latch on to some of the text on that page to then move towards uh, the ad creation, uh, there's a chance that they would actually take that privacy policy text and accidentally incorporate that into a dynamic asset. And obviously that's not what you want. That's not what you want to happen. Um, so Google will show you what those dynamic um, assets are and so you'll want to follow up to make sure that they align um, with what you're looking to do as a business and that they're not taking random pieces of text from your page. So another thing with final URL expansion is Google can scan your pages and those can serve as the landing pages for the advertisement um, and Google will do this when they think that it can lead to a potential conversion. Um, but you'll want to scan the list of URLs that Google is actually using as final URLs. Um, and you can do this inside of something like Google Analytics to make sure that it is a page that assists in the conversion process of that user. Um, I've seen examples inside of Performance Max where Google sends traffic to pages like the privacy policy, uh, pages like the contact us page. Um, and that's not what you want to happen. Your, your advertising money is too valuable to waste. If you turn final URL expansion on, just make sure you follow up to make sure that the app, the dynamic ad text is relevant and that the landing page that Google's sending users to is also relevant.
Next up, it's an easy win with location targeting. Do not enable presence or interest. Instead, use presence. So presence or interest targeting, as Google says, is people in, regularly in, or have shown interest in your targeted locations. And then they say that this is the recommended strategy. Whereas presence is just people in or regularly in your targeted location. So the, the difference here is quite simple. Um, let's say that you have a small radius, a small service radius, or a small area that you service um, your customer base. Um, if you have presence or interest enabled, you might actually be showing ads to people who are researching your town as a vacation spot or who briefly pass through as they were going to another destination. Um, so you want to enable presence because this is people in or regularly in your targeted location so you're, that you're not just wasting money um, on people that have looked up your location in Google. Um, this is a, a great way to prevent spam traffic and I'll leave a link in the video description below because I have another video about how to lower spam traffic and junk leads inside of Google Ads. And this is a great strategy and this is one of my uh, points in that video as well. Sorry for the double negative here, but another thing that you do not want to do is not leveraging the search terms report inside of the insights tab. So performance max does not give a lot of data, but some of the useful data inside of the insights tab is this section right here. And for privacy reasons, I just blurred out the search terms and conversion value. But um, inside of the insights tab, you can actually see um, several of these search terms uh, that drove traffic inside of performance max. And they'll show the conversion value and the search volume associated with that particular keyword. Now, you can use this information to actually help build out the rest of your Google Ads account. So let's say that you find a particular keyword that is converting really well inside of Performance Max. Well, you can actually take that keyword and create its own search campaign um, targeting that keyword because it's already proved concept inside of Performance Max. And also something to note is if you have a search campaign targeting a keyword, that gets preferential treatment with Google um, and so that Performance Max does not really compete with that search campaign, that search campaign would have the benefit of the doubt and receive priority over the Performance Max campaign. Another thing that you do not want to do is set unreasonable performance targets from the start with Performance Max. So one of the levers that we have access to inside of Performance Max is to set our performance target. So you can set a target cost per acquisition or you can set a target return on ad spend and then Google will attempt to achieve that particular return on ad spend or target CPA. Um, but something to note here is right out of the gate, if you have a performance target that is too strict, that's candidly, that is unreasonable, it's something that Google really has no chance of hitting, what you will see is that the spend of the campaign will drop to almost zero. And that is not what you want to do in the early stages of a performance max campaign as the system's learning, as it's attempting to scale and grow, is provide an unrealistic expectation. So then the spend drops to almost zero. So it's not able to learn. So as a result, you're not going to see any results from that campaign. Next up, this is for lead gen. You do not want to trust the conversion quality without inspecting inside of performance max. So if you look up performance max junk leads inside of Google, you'll see this result right here. And here's the featured snippet from Google where this website did a study that they said up to 20% of performance max uh, campaign leads were spam leads. Now, one of the reasons for this, if you think about it, so if performance max uses Google's entire platform, includes display, includes you know traffic from apps, Sometimes you will get bottom of the barrel traffic, so spam traffic that is coming through. So if your goal inside of Google Ads is to generate leads or to generate phone calls, this can be problematic because if you're getting traffic from the bottom of the barrel sources and all the system is trying to do is to optimize for a phone call click or optimize for a lead form submission, you might get caught in this trap where there's spammers out there that are automatically filling out these forms that count as conversions. So then the system thinks that it's doing well when it's actually not. Uh, so hopefully you have something like a CRM uh, that you can log into to see if the leads that you're getting are relevant and are leads that can actually convert. 
Here's a quick plug, as I mentioned before, I have a video about how to stop junk traffic and conversions inside of Google Ads because your money is way too valuable to waste. Next thing that you do not want to do uh, is specific to e-commerce, and that is you do not want to treat all products equally. So inside of Performance Max, you can set a target return on ad spend. And for most advertisers, that is revenue, that is not profit. Let's say you have Performance Max set up and you just have one campaign and maybe you separate the, the different segments of products by creating unique asset groups with all this great imagery. Um, you're only allowed one single, at this time, return on ad spend target, and that's at the campaign level. So you would set that return on ad spend level at the campaign level, and then in this example, let's say you had different asset groups, and one of them was sneakers and sandals and, and dress shoes or whatever it is, but they're all gonna be fighting for that return on ad spend goal to hit that as a performance lever when these segments of products could have completely different margins associated with them. So one strategy that you could consider is separating, separating out completely different um, segments of products into their own campaigns or lumping product segments that have similar margin into their own performance max campaign so that when the system's optimizing for return on ad spend, it can actually lead to bottom line profit for you. I've shared a lot of these with you because I have made a lot of these mistakes myself. So hopefully in sharing some of these, um, you do not make the same mistakes that I did and you're able to achieve better results inside of Performance Max in your Google Ads account. I hope those insights were helpful for you and I wanna hear from you. If you've run a Performance Max campaign, let me know if there's anything that I missed and if there's any other point that you think advertisers should avoid when setting up and managing a Performance Max campaign. Thank you so much for watching this video and if you're looking for more money-saving marketing advice, visit scottredgate.com and subscribe to this channel to watch more videos. Take care.